Hello and welcome. I am Chema Kaje Uwaduka. This is Africa in 10 Minutes, where we bring to you the top business news as reported on Footprint Africa. But first, the headlines. Rwanda woos international business leaders. JSC Russian Export Center invests in Afrexim Bank becomes shareholder. Hong Kong phone maker to enter Kenyan market. And now the news in the Rwanda's government is increasing its efforts to boost foreign direct investments in the country. Following a recent meeting with a delegation of global CEOs who have shown interest in the East African nation, President Paul Kagame's administration is making moves to make the country more attractive to the international business community. When a current CEO of Ocean Enterprises said, We are interested in business with Rwanda, and President Kagame explained to us why Rwanda is such an incredible country to invest in, and we are looking forward to that. Business leaders from across the globe have been keen on Rwanda for over a decade now. In 2007, a US-sponsored program called the Partnership for Enhancing Agriculture in Rwanda through Linkages, Pearl, helped Rwanda's coffee growers boost their yield and dramatically improve the quality of their coffee. At the time, Pearl introduced Rwandan coffee growers to US and European buyers of specialty coffee, including Sustainable Harvest Coffee of Portland and Oregon, Intelligentia Coffee of Chicago, and Vermont's Green Mountain Coffee. Now, Rwanda's renewed call to investors comes after President Kagame met with more than 30 American members of the Chief Executives Organization over the weekend. The organization is described as a global community of business leaders with unique connections and enduring relationships. Khan, who led the delegation, said, Rwanda's reputation for cleanliness and security continues to impress us. Yet another appealing characteristic we found here. President Kagame has been pushing his administration to attract foreign investments through the improved regulatory framework good governance and an aversion to corruption in the country. The head of state said last September that the country has added a mechanism for bringing in the private sector and ensuring that they can do business at a lesser cost. From as early as 2005, Rwanda reduced its corporate income taxes from 30% to 15% for priority sectors including energy, financial services, transport, affordable housing and logistics. Kagame said he hopes that these incentives will help drive the country's development and encourage the international community to see Rwanda as East Africa's preferred investment hub. In other news, JSC Russian Export Center, REC, has become the latest international financial organization to join the African Export Import Bank, Afrexin Bank, as a shareholder following its successful subscription to Class C shares of the Pan-African Multilateral Trade Finance Bank. The shareholding, which became effective on December 29, 2017, followed discussions between the bank and Russian officials, during which the two sides explored ways of cooperating to take advantage of the numerous opportunities for trade and development between Russia and the African continent. The discussions resulted in an agreement signed by the president of Afrexim Bank, Dr. Benedict Rama, and the chief executive officer of REC, Peter Vratkov, on December 11, 2017, by which REC committed to subscribing to the Class C Afrexim Bank shares. Afrexim Bank, in a statement, said with the new partnership, the two entities have already started working actively on joint projects in a number of African countries, focusing mainly on mining and transport infrastructure. REC is owned by the State Corporation Bank for Development and Foreign Economic Affairs. Afrexim Bank shareholders are a mix of public and private entities divided into four classes and consist of African government, central banks, regional and sub-regional institutions, private investors and financial institutions, as well as non-African financial institutions, export credit agencies and private investors. Moving on, Hong Kong-based smartphone manufacturer New Mobiles is eyeing the Kenyan market as part of its strategy to expand in Africa. New Mobiles, which is owned by Sun Cupid Technology HK Limited, manufactures its phones in mainland China. The tech firm will debut in the Kenyan market by introducing Android smartphones priced between 15,000 to 50,000 Kenyan shillings. New has been operating for the last three decades in Asia, the US and Europe, and now wants a piece of the Kenyan smartphone market among other new regions. We will be launching the Nairobi outlet next month as part of the wider scheme to penetrate the African market, Danny Sit, New Mobile's general manager, said in an interview. We are using Kenya to enter the African market as it is a stable country. The currency is also relatively stable because even after the elections, the dollar has not changed. New Mobile said it will work with about 300 retail outlets and online players across the country. In Mali, Mali's industrial gold production rose to 49.6 tons in 2017, up 5% from the previous year, a senior official of the Mines Ministry has disclosed. 
The figure exceeds the 46.9 tons that Africa's third largest producer managed in 2016 and was well ahead a forecast of 45 tons that the government had predicted halfway through 2017. In a statement, Deputy Director of Mali's Department for Mines and Geology, Karim Berth, said there was a real progress in the industrial mines in net improvement in performance. Major investors in Mali's gold sector include Anglo Gold Ashanti and Rangold Resources. Last year's output was boosted by the start of production at B2 Gold Giant Fakola project. Fakola and Hummingbird Resources' new Yapolila mine are also expected to hit full production this year. Industrial mining currently makes up only half of Mali's gold output, the government estimates, with about 50 tons a year produced by artisanal miners. And finally this week, Ethiopian Airlines has acquired a 45% stake in Zambia Airways that is set to be relaunched after more than two decades. Africa's most profitable airline said it has finalized a shareholders' agreement with Zambia in line with its vision of setting up multiple hubs in southern and central Africa and the Horn. Under the pact, the Zambian government will be the majority shareholder with a 55% stake. Mr. Tewolde Gebren Miriam, the CEO of Ethiopian Airline Group, said, The relaunching of Zambia Airways will enable the traveling public in Zambia and the southern African region to enjoy greater connectivity options, thereby facilitating the flow of investment, trade and tourism, and contributing to the social economic growth of the country and the region. In this statement, Mr. Tewolde said Zambia Airways will serve national and regional destinations before embarking on international flights. In December, Zambia's cabinet approved the revival of the national airline at an estimated cost of $30 million. The airline was liquidated in 1994 after running broke, largely due to patronage and abuse by the political establishment. Ethiopian Airlines runs Togo's Askai Airlines, where it holds a 40% stake, and Malawian Airlines, formerly Air Malawi, where it holds a 49% shareholding. With this, we conclude on this week's news. Please stay tuned for a recap of the stories. Rwanda woos international business leaders. JSC Russian Export Center invests in Afrexim Bank, becomes shareholder. Hong Kong phone maker to enter Kenyan market. Annual gold production up by 5% in Mali. Ethiopian Airlines inks deal with Zambia to revive national career. Join the conversation on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and connect with us on LinkedIn. Stay updated with the trending business news in Africa. Log on to www.footprintofafrica.com today. Footprint to Africa, business news made in Africa by Africans.